Hi everyone, this is a quick update on the latest release of Cardigan Bay. Cardigan Bay is a wiki engine, personal knowledge management, personal note taker, digital gardening type tool. It's basically a wiki engine which is getting some new functionality. So here we are on the GitHub page. I will quickly take you through installing it you just have to click here on the releases the latest one we're going to talk about today cardigan bay 0.71 all you have to do is download this zip file save it to your desktop down it comes and we'll do this in real time open that up it's a zip file, let's just extract it here to the desktop. We will go inside it and what you'll see inside is the main jar file. Most of the code is it's all in there. Uh, there's just a bat file to run it on Windows. And Bedrock is our sort of default wiki pages. So let's just run go.bat. Windows will check because obviously they know nothing about this. Microsoft know nothing about this and they don't trust me. So the format is uh, it's a program that, that runs on your local machine. It will run in Windows, it will run in Linux. It should, in principle, run on Mac, although I haven't tested that yet. Uh, but it's a web server, and so we'll access it through the browser. You'll notice the important information here is this. It says it's running on port 4545. So let's now go to our local host 4545. So this is what you should see when you first open up Cardigan Bay. Uh, by default, you go to a page called Hello World. That's kind of the start page. You've got a menu uh, of common or frequently visited pages and actions up here. You've got back and forward buttons. You've got this nav bar, which we'll see a bit more of in a minute. Some extra buttons here. And then each page is like this. It's divided into a number of what we call cards, these white areas. And Bedrock is your kind of default wiki. So it's a mixture of some getting started pages, some documentation. It's got some useful examples uh, of how certain things are done. So you'll find that many of the features will have a page explaining them or with an example of them. And you can have a look at the edit the page here to see the kind of source code of the page to see how it's actually done like on the release notes here you can see that that's uh, links fairly standard or in double square brackets the most important kind of different idea here is these four hyphens have become the card separator and all pages have a card at the end which is the backlinks which are the other pages that link to them so we're not here to explain the whole of Cardigan Bay. Um, I'm making various videos about that. What we're going to have a look at, though, is what are the things that have changed recently. So the first thing is, uh, what I say here, reordering cards doesn't reload the page, nor does moving cards from one page to another. Uh, if we go to the sandbox here, this is the page for experimenting. Card separators, as I say, is this. Thing. I'll do, make some new cards here, card one, card two, card three, save that page, and you'll see that uh, those extra cards have now been added. So we can now press these buttons to change the order, you'll see one has moved below two, we can move it further down, two, three, one, or we can move that up. So we can reorder the cards on a page fairly quickly and easily and previously this would reload the page now it doesn't so that's useful because it uh, means that the back button is going to continue working 
Similarly, if I want to move one of these cards to, let's say, Sandbox 2, I'll call it, another page here. Moving a card from one page to another, you just open up this bar at the bottom, type in the name of the other page, hit the Send button. Sandbox 2 didn't exist, but it's gone and created it. And card 2 is now here. And you can see back on the sandbox, we just have card 1, card 3. The important point again, this backwards and forward buttons are working as you'd expect. Previously, again, when you moved a card, it uh, reloaded the page and that broke the backwards and forwards, the back forward behavior here. So yeah, so that's just an obvious thing that needed fixing, it's now fixed. There's lots of other things that also need fixing, but at least we now have that. Uh, right, bug with quote marks in search terms, it's fixed. Text search now returns number of results. So we've got search here, if I put in say the word wiki, I can click this search button, that pops up the transcript. That's just a place where when we're asking specific questions, we can, the results appear here. It's useful to have them in this place where we can see them again. And you'll see now the search results has found four pages, but more importantly, or what I'm demonstrating here, it tells you the number. So if you've got a lot of results, you know quickly how many results they are. We can return to the, the main page. We've also got closure up here. We can say apply the plus function to arrange 100 items. Click the execute button. That simply executes that thing, puts the result here on the transcript. And you'll see the transcript just keeps building up with previous results as well. Okay, so that's that. Next main item, adding the patterning card. So many years ago, when I was kind of getting into closure, I wrote a library called Patterning. That's available. I mean, it's on GitHub, but it's also uh, a library you can get through the kind of Maven repository for producing kind of patterns algorithmically using Clojure. It was partly a kind of learn Clojure project, partly I was kind of doing some stuff in that area. So let's just look for an example of that in a minute. Uh, right. Patterning examples. So there's a page that comes out of the box with your bedrock, explains a bit more about it, shows you some tutorials, uh, and here's an example of a pattern. Now these patterns are generated on the server, and here's an example, here's a bit of the code in, for generating a pattern. This A round basically produces a kind of rotation pattern made of things with the same number of sides. So like if you send it the number five here, you'll get five pentagons. If we were to edit this, change the code to send it seven, save that, we would now get a round of seven septagons. Okay, that's also now put into a, a grid layout, a four by four grid layout. We could change that as well. Let's make it a grid layout of five by five. So that's the kind of thing that patterning lets you do. And you can build up some quite complex patterns with it. Um, you can start kind of mapping transformations or random uh, changes across sequences of things and then these are layouts, as we call them. They say the grid layout or the staggered grid layout. There's a layout to put a big one surrounded by a kind of border of smaller ones. We can do things like this, transform them sizes. So, you know, there are some examples on the page. If you've used Clojure before, and if you, if you look at the main patterning site, you'll see that. Well, I wrote that. I just thought it'd be fun to build it in as a feature of Cardigan Bay. So we've got those patterns now as standard. So that was for what we had in 7.0. Well, okay, 
the last thing to look at is workspaces. So as well as uh, running code on the server, we can also run Clojure dynamically in a page. Here's an example workspace. If you notice, we use a hiccup. Hiccup is the kind of closure standard way of re representing an HTML type thing. It's part of the reagent, um, which is a kind of React wrapper. So if I run this code, here's a here's a function that maps uh, range of twenty. It maps a list item, and creating these reducing the, the, the plus across the range. So basically it's like um, a sum of all the numbers up to this. So that is something which we have had for a while in Cardigan Bay. Something that was new in, in version 0 0.7 is publishing the code. So here is a an example of where we've defined a function to wrap. Uh, we're now generating HTML and we are producing a list of numbers and then the total at the end. Now, Cardigan Bay pages, uh, Cardigan Bay is designed to be used locally on your machine, but it's also designed for publishing a wiki. And we don't actually have a, a live public server. What we do is we export the pages as flat HTML pages. So previously, uh, we didn't have the ability to, when, when we exported a page with one of these workspaces, of course, that would not work in a flat HTML. Now we've, we're using Skittle, which is the small closure interpreter as a JavaScript library to include in the pages. So if we now export that workspace example, now if I come into here, into Bedrock, the exported pages are here, and I'm going to open the workspace example in my browser. And as you can see, the pages here, we now have this little box. So here's that example we were looking at before. If I click Run here, it's just printing out a list of numbers and the total. So this little bit of code here is running perfectly happily in this flat exported page. So now if you're making a wiki with Cardigan Bay and you'd like to include some executable code, let's say some uh, mathematical models or small simulations or something to a calculator, for example, to help your readers to to calculate some values then these can now be added to pages and are working in the exported thing so finally what we now have in uh, 0 0.71 is what i'm calling simplification so one of the issues with publishing your executable code in a work you know from a workspace on your public wiki is that the entire source code is visible in that edit text area. And of course, that's very useful for people who want to see all the code and work on any part of the code. But it can be a bit confusing if what you're really trying to do is just show or just give people access to a model, perhaps changing the parameters to it. And you just want to give people a sort of API or user interface to your model, but you don't want to show them all of the code and the sort of infrastructure behind the scenes. So I'm going to give you an example of that, creating a new page here. This is not doesn't come as part of Bedrock. I'm just uh, creating this new page, but I prepared this code earlier. And what this code is, is a very, very simple graphing calculator. Now, Cardigan Bay knows nothing about drawing graphs. It's, you know, there's no, uh, nothing prepared in advance for this. But all I've got here are some functions that uh, create tags and then using that they create SVG tags and polylines and things like that. We've got some functions that transform numbers from one space to another. We can then build some things to manage points and eventually 
we have this function called graphit which produces an SVG plot of a series of points. Uh, we transform them from the space of the data to the space of the on the screen. We've got a function here called make points. It takes in another function and a range of numbers and just creates a vector of points with the X and Y's for that. And then the important point here, well, let's take this out for a minute. Let's just save this and let's export the page as before. And now let's come over here to workspace example two. And you will see all of that code is in the workspace. And if we run it, it does indeed plot a function. The function it's plotting here is just f x times x. If we made that x times x times x, you know, the cube of it, run it, it's going to get a little bit steeper. So that's a great, you know, you can see actually we didn't have to do anything special. We, we're not using any third party libraries for graphing, but small amount of closure code can produce at least something to represent uh, a plot of some some numbers and this was published right we 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 wrote it using cardigan bay but it's now on a standalone page but you may not want your users to see all of this code here right you know there's a lot of infrastructure they don't need to look at so if we come back into our example again and now we're going to add this uh, new feature from uh, 0 0.7.1. And it's sort of a simple hack, really. Uh, semicolons of comments. Uh, do four like this, and you put public here. What that does is that divides the program into a part before the public, which is considered to be private, let's say, or hidden, and the part after it, which is the part we're going to actually show the users. Okay, so that's the public part, it's like a public API. So if we save that again now, and we export it again now, we come back here, reload this, and what you will see is that our text box now just shows this part that was the public part. That's the bit you really want to show your users, right? Define a function, make the points in a range they define, and plot it in the space. If you run it, it works in exactly the same way. It hasn't changed. If you look at the source code of this page, you'll see all that code is actually there. It's just in a hidden uh, input element. So we're not about. It's not about trying to make your code secret. It's just about simplifying the experience for the user. So now on a public wiki, you can have a page that explains a, a mathematical model that you're talking about. And then you can simply include a copy of that model in the page with a few relevant functions that the users can can use to change the parameters or, you know, we could make this up to a thousand. We could make it X cubed and we'll get that. Quite an interesting function is uh, mod. So we can say mod X by 11 or something. And we'll get a periodic function. Uh, let's bring that down a bit, uh, back to 100. So we get a periodic function like that. Um, I found this quite interesting. If you multiply two mods of different values together, then you can make some slightly more unusual looking things. So this is not the functionality of a you know, whole graphing calculator type functionality, partly because we don't currently have the standard maths library here, unfortunately. Um, that's one of the things on the in the to do queue is uh, to figure out how to bring in uh, access to standard maths into the Skittle interpreter we've got loaded in here. But anything you can actually write yourself, if for any functions you can write yourself, we can now make a quite nice published thing. And just to point out that this uh, template I use here for the exported pages is obviously completely customizable, so you can use any template you want. 
Cardigan Bay will just produce a, a number of flat HTML files by wrapping a template from a particular actually in here in system export resources so there's the where the template and the CSS are you can change those to be anything you like all right so uh, thanks for watching I think that's pretty much where we are with Cardigan Bay that's it for 0 0.7.1 and I will see you again with the next release and I'm out